That would be beautiful. You so cute when being beautiful, no? Mm -hmm. Very cute. Oh, look at the babies! You're so cute, aren't you? All right. I think, should we get you some breakfast and then we'll send these photos? Breakfast. Breakfast first, of course. Oh, my goodness, where'd you find? Did you find a carrot? Oh, my goodness, it's so great. 
stand by for a moment while I open the label. <laughs> I've got to send something. Then we're going to Okay, I think that's good enough, right? Oh, oh you can do it. Oh my goodness. Hello, oh, my goodness, there's a cat down. All right. I'm not doing it. They're just squeaky because he made them squeaky. That's how they came. They came squeaky. Here we go. All right. Oh my goodness. Oh, the cuteness is just. Oh, look at Tigress. Just need to get this email. You're so cute. Did you have a little breakfast? Oh, the purring. So much purring. Oh, well, 81 images. Whoa. <gasps> oh, that's funny.
Do one more, one more email. to show off your beautiful fur pattern. It's very special. Oh, you're so wonderful. Aren't you just the most wonderful? Oh, I think you are. I'm pretty sure you are.
Hello. Oh, you're so cute. Do you want some animation? Should we do some animation? While you're here? What do you think? Should we do your revolution? Let's do it. This will be good for another month of flea, ear mite, and worm protection. Except pink worms, which she had done two weeks ago. Yes, you did. Aren't you so cute? Oh, you're so cute. There you go. All done. Let's make sure we get that on the calendar. Oh, there you go. There you fishy. Celebrate the revolution with your fishy. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're so cute. Aren't you cute? Oh, so cute. Oh, whoops. That's funny. Because, um, I should do this in this one. Perfect. All right. And the babies were born on the 5th, right? Mm -hmm. Just updating the weight chart. Hmm. Obviously my each calculation is not working. Oh, what? You're so cute. Oh, I know. It's so special. So many flops. So many mama flops. Oh, and a big burp too. A big mama burp. Okay, let's see. Uh, today this is a minus five divided by seven. Oh, okay. I think that's why we don't have. Oh, length minus five. One, two, three, four, five. Right. Maybe it's minus six. Maybe that's why. Okay. Oh, there we go. That's working. Well, there you have it. Mm -hmm. Just talking to myself. You know how I do it all the time. There we go. Perfect. Um, I guess I may as well weigh everybody while we're here. Leave the stage. Okay. Today is August 14th. August is halfway over. How crazy is that, huh? It's crazy.
Oh my goodness. Oh, she's she's talking to Stony. What? Oh my goodness. Okay. Oh, so cute. All right, here we go. Little goat. Now you know why we have little goat kittens, because we have a little goat mama. <laughs> the most adorable of little goat mamas. Oops. Wayne kittens. I'm sure she's gonna come rushing back in as soon as I make anyone squeak. Oh, they're so cute. Wait, I need to take a picture first. Adorable. They're so cute. You made such adorable kittens. How is that possible? How is that possible? Hmm? Is it because you're extra adorable? You have enough adorableness for everybody? Let's try and see Walt first. No, oh, he's right. He's fine. One ninety nine for big boy. Big boy Walt. He didn't even squeak. He didn't even squeak. So that's a gain of 10 grams for Walt. 7.02 ounces. Good job. Good job. He's just about doubled his birth weight. Um, should we check his eyes? His collar's good. Should we take our eyes? Oh, he's got little tiny eyeballs. Little oh, what it is. It's very exciting. And his tongue, he forgot to put his tongue away. Oh, he's so cute to look at his little tongue. He's so promotion. Look at his little belly. Uh, okay. Good, good. I have left uh, Walt's collar on because. When we do the merge, um, that will be one less color that everybody has to learn. Um, I think it makes a big difference in their adoptability when people can tell them apart. And um, when people uh, can get to know their personalities. So I could take his collar off, I suppose, and put it back on when we get closer. <laughs> I just want people to, it, it'll be a lot of black kittens. And since the other ones don't have collars, because Cisco takes them off, <laughs> I thought maybe I would get everyone used to Walt being a yellow. Do you have hiccups? Do you have hiccups? Oh my goodness. But we'll see. Maybe I'll take it off. Maybe I'll take it off for now. <gasps> oh, what's this? Oh, it's a little tigress with little eyeballs. 236. Oh, don't get any trouble. 236. That's 8.3 big ounces. 8.3 and how many eyeballs? Two. Two glorious eyeballs. Good job, tigress. Oh, Puss in Boots is still clinging to his umbilical stump. He's the last one. 239. Big boy. He has overtaken his sister. 8.43 ounces. Hmm. And 
this is this one's sure to be noisy. He's got his eyeballs coming in nicely. 231 for the hiccup. Oh, you're really cute. Oh, I like it. Well, you can't look. Like there we go. Yes, you can come sit in my lap if you want to. <laughs> so again, poor, poor tigress. I got her smooshed. She got smooshed. Oh, look at this. She's going to observe. So nice. Mm. So cute. What are the odds I can actually weigh a kitten without getting in trouble? Because mm -hmm. we have two more to go. Two more. You're so cute. Get your little tail pip. Oh, so delightful. So delightful. This could be you someday, viewer. <laughs> yes. Yes, it could. Oh, because Super Mama Tip is going to have to have the best home ever. Just texting with the awesome Angela who is working on some things. Some things. She's pretty awesome. Uh, let's see. <laughs> you're so cute. Why are you so cute? Oh, you're so cute. All right, we have two more. So cute. Two more kittens to weigh. Um, this one. Oh, we don't make squeaks or we won't get into. Oh, I don't know. Uh oh. Oh no. He's fine. Look, he's fine. He's fine. Two twenty-three. Oh no. Oh no. Look what I did. Look what I did. Oh, I'm sorry, Mama. I need him to speak. <laughs> You're a good mommy. Look at, we've got eyeballs. Partial eyeballs for Skipper. I need to get a good weight. 223. There you go. He's fine. 223. She's a good mama. Good mommy, what a good mommy you are. And one more. Oh, you don't go to your eyeballs. What? She's like, uh, pet me. Don't make the kitten squeak. But I'll make one more kitten squeak. That's all. Just one more. Just one with. Look at those wondrous eyeballs. Look at the big girl. She's such a big girl with the tiniest, tiniest eyeballs. She's so tiny. <laughs> 
He's fine, Mama. 181. There we go. Did Another good game for the little Eep. So, um, 6.38 ounces for Eep. Big girl. Obviously still the littlest. Uh, the biggest today is Puss in Boots. He is overtaking Tigress, so he's 8.43. Oh, she... <laughs> Oh no, where are we going? Where are we going? Just put her there. That's perfect. Good job. <laughs> Eve had wandered too far away and was going to get a timeout. But they're not going to follow you over there. You can, do you want to get in my lap again? Do you want to get in my lap again? Perfect. <laughs> You're so cute. Oh, so cute. <laughs> oh, they're really noisy, aren't they? Look at such a grown-up little squeak. Very grown-up. Yes. Eep and Walt must be smooshed immediately. Immediate smooshies for the baby. Oh! <laughs> Did you just get catapulted? Oh, did we just get a wild ride? Let's see, do we have, and we, we didn't celebrate the Bootsy eyeballs, but they're pretty adorable. Pretty cute. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you don't miss out on the milk bar. So we have uh, six kittens with each mama. Oh. It's such a good mummy. So sweet. Look at you. Oh. Look at even little Walt is getting his eyeball. Mm, you're so cute. All right, we'll take your collar off for a couple of days and see how you do. There's only one black kitten in here now. Yes, he's very handsome. He's very handsome. You're free. Oh, get him, Skipper, get him. So good, um, Good weight gain for everyone. That's good. Um, let's see, did I, I weighed all of Cisco's kittens yesterday. They had good weight gains. I'm gonna, just, I'm gonna make a note of, uh, who was it, Ginger? I mean, Daisy. Eyes starting yesterday and then Walt eyes starting today. So if I get a chance, I I might weigh them today. Um, Cisco has been doing really great.
distracted. <laughs> yeah, so Cisco, um, I'm sure you've noticed, has been doing really great. She's super relaxed. I'll uh, flip over there so you can see. Um, she's been much more relaxed. Um, obviously, when she hears noises, she hides and is scared. But um, in be the in-between times, she's been pretty good. She seems pretty comfortable with her babies. Um, and so I'm not as worried um, about uh, disruptions and visits from the human predator um, stressing her out to the point where she you know, has difficulty recovering. I think we're past that point. I think it seems like things are pretty good. Um, and so I'm quite pleased with that. Cisco is now caring for six of her seven babies, everyone but Walt. I was I was uh, considering keeping two of Cisco's kittens together over here, but um, because week two and week three are kind of the highest milk demand weeks, um, I thought uh, it would be better probably to to spread it out a little bit more. Um, rather than having Tip have to produce for seven. Um, and so I think uh, so far everything is fine. And Cisco doesn't mind um, babies that come over smelling like Tip. And Tip doesn't mind babies that smell like Cisco. And so it's been uh, pretty good so far. So that's all encouraging, good success, I think. Um, we have only seen three kittens at our feeding station. Um, there must be more out there that have survived. I mean, we, we think that, we were trying to calculate the numbers the other day Probably 25 cats had babies that we know of, um, and average of four or five kittens born. The average from the cats we've had from the colony would be five. So 25 times five is 125 kittens born. Now some of those were born uh, at laps and some were born here so that was about 46 well how many okay so I should calculate all of this right because we had we've had uh, five pregnant cats at laps well four pregnant cats at laps one was went into foster care who was semi-feral um so that was the ones that laps had six six and three and then the foster care one had five so that's 20 right 12 15 20 and then sloney had four so that's 24 and then now rose has four, so that's 28. Cisco has seven. I guess we count seven for Cisco. That's 35. That were born in our care. Um, I guess we count seven for Cisco. That's 35. That were born in our care. Um, so that brings it down to 90 that were born at the colony, presumably. Um, and then of those 90, we've brought in quite a few 
all of which had ringworms. So that's probably another, what, 25 maybe? So that brings us down to 65. another minimum time to cure. Um, so, you know, five to seven weeks that room is, is occupied. So it's uh, definitely been a challenge from that perspective. And all the ones we've gotten in while they're pregnant, um, we've been able to avoid ringworm. So, um, that's why we're trying to trap them when they're pregnant um, just to make it so much easier for the moms so we can get the moms dewormed and get them good nutrition and so that we can save as many of the babies as possible and then of course all the babies are spayed and neutered and socialized and adopted um, and the moms uh, so far two of the moms that we've brought in have been semi-feral and our first one was adopted and is doing great. And uh, we're very hopeful for Rose, our second one, who's at LAPS. Um, and so um, those two hopefully will be adopted. Well, Doe has been adopted and hopefully Rose will be adopted too. Uh, and then the other moms get spayed and returned and are very, very happy when they are returned. So. Um, everybody wins, I think. There are tons of birds in the in the forest, um, which is interesting, considering the number of cats. So statistically, kind of across the board, um, the uh, kind of the agreed upon number of the for the mortality rate is 75% of kittens born in the wild or just to, to stray moms, basically born outside. 75% um, don't survive longer than six months. So that's pretty, you know, a pretty sobering number. Um, obviously our survival rates once we once we get the pregnant moms are super high um, so we are having I think we've had quite quite an impact if you can imagine the um, kittens that we have been able to spay and neuter if they were out there reproducing they would be the, our first round of kittens would be uh, starting to become sexually mature and able to get pregnant at four months old. So they're born in April. That's May, June, July, August is four months. So 
right around now, the first the first round of kittens from this year uh, is starting to become old enough to get pregnant. So um, we are seeing far, far fewer pregnancies. It was when we first started. It was it was we were kind of horrified. Every cat at the feeding station that was female was pregnant. Well, actually, I shouldn't say every cat because we got there in February, so many were pregnant. And then we hurried up and did a bunch of trapping to try to get the young ones that weren't pregnant yet. We got as many done as we could, and then we had to kind of hold off and wait. So we've gotten most of them now at this point on, our, on the first feeding station. So um, we do have a few left to get and work we it's been about seven weeks since our last group of unspayed females um the more skittish ones the harder to trap ones um since they've had their babies so um probably starting next week or even this weekend uh well no not this weekend but um starting next week we'll try to trap some of those and get them spayed before they get pregnant again Yes, lily pad was. Yeah, lily pad was not even semi feral. She was friendly, um, but she didn't have her babies here, so that's why I didn't include her in that calculation. Um, you're so cute. So anyway, um, thank you guys for all the support with the feral colony and for being interested in feral cats and for giving them value, I think that that's a really important, that's really important progress in um, having communities accept responsibility for their community cats. And um, knowing that they're out there and knowing how many there are and kind of seeing their struggle and seeing what lovely cats they are um, when they're, happy in their home setting and then how lovely their babies are and that they're just like your pet cats in some ways but they're completely different in other ways I think all of that is is valuable information and it's I'm super excited that you guys are enjoying following along and learning a lot too because the more we know about feral community cats the more we can help them and the more we can address cat overpopulation which will eventually reduce the load on shelters and um, be a really good thing. So good job, everybody. Um, If you would like to help, um, we of course always need donations for like spades and neuters and um, stuff like that. Um, you can spread the word about what we're doing, share the project information and share on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and wherever else. Um, tell your friends, try to get media attention for what we're doing. That's always helpful. Um, tinykittens.com slash cats has all of our stats and photos of the cats. So you can kind of get to know our colony. So, and then you could also go to tinykittens.com slash help and see just uh, some, some ways to help um, that they don't all involve uh, financial support because I know that not everybody is uh, able to do that and um, we appreciate support in the many forms in which we are fortunate enough to get it. Um, but there's lots you can do without donating money too that helps. So. Um, and you can also volunteer and donate at your local shelter, which is awesome. So, 
Um, yes, and huge, huge, huge thanks to Ginger and everybody who participated in the Cisco birthday challenge. Um, I have been meaning to announce this on Facebook, and it's I just I haven't quite gotten there yet. But um, you guys raised two thousand three hundred and forty four dollars, which is incredible. And it was I think one hundred and thirty two people donated or something like that, which is ridiculous. I mean, I was I was blown away, like just it was amazing because it was what was so cool about it is that it was mostly like, you know, five dollars, ten dollars, twenty dollars, and then a few people made like big donations, like five hundred dollars. Ouchie! Did you just bite my arm because I wasn't paying attention to you? Um. So that's awesome and we, we couldn't do we couldn't do any of what we do without without your support um so uh, please know that every day i am incredibly grateful for you guys and having people to share it with and also you make it possible to to do as much as we can do so I think that's this is this project is definitely a shared victory for all of us. Um, and the team has been working so hard, Lori and Kimsey's and Jules, foster mom Jules, and our awesome foster moms, Linda and Kathy and um, Daniela and so many and Alicia, all these amazing foster moms who have been helping. And, you know, obviously the LAP staff are amazing and we couldn't do this without them because they, they do the really hard stuff like the ringworm bathing twice a week and socializing feral kittens in ringworm ISO. And it's, um, it's been really great to be able to partner with laps because tiny kittens gets to go out and do the field stuff and we do the trapping and the cataloging and the feeding every day and all that and um and the you know bringing in the pregnant cats and trying to figure out how to do that better and they do the you know the sheltering stuff that we're not equipped to do like taking care of a million ringworm kittens and and um, housing the feral cats overnight and taking them to the vet and all that stuff. So it's been a really, it's, we've been able to accomplish so much more because of, um, because we've been able to work together on this project and then also because of your support. So, and also our vets, can't forget the vets because they have been flexible with their schedules. You guys have seen how impossible it is to plan for like Kimsey's and I will plan a trapping day and then trap zero cats and we'll have like 10 appointments booked. And then there are days that we'll have like five appointments booked and we trap like 10 cats. So it's just, it's so hard to plan for and everyone's been flexible and super supportive and um, like Mountain View and um, Yorks and Creek Vet in particular have really gone above and beyond doing like extra things for the feral cats, like, you know, giving them warmed fluids and just giving, making sure that they're extra comfortable, which is really sweet of them. So um, lots and lots of people are involved in making the project a success, even though you primarily see me and um, Kimsey's, um, there are lots and lots of people involved in making it a success. So I am very grateful for all of you. Um, Stargazer, yeah, so, um, the downside to the data we're collecting is that it becomes very obvious when one of our regulars is not showing up. 
at the feeding station. So we've had two, um, Piper and Stargazer, who were amongst our crew of regulars who we haven't seen for a while. Um, I like to tell myself that it's because they um, have moved on to their own territory. Um, and I know that we did get a GPS collar on Stargazer for a couple of days. His territory spans at least 26 acres. Um, so it is it is possible that he is just spending his time in another area. Um, so, because I don't, I just, you know, I can't think about the alternative. So that's what, that's what I'm telling myself. So that's what I'm telling you. Um, it's, that's, it's tough. It's definitely tough knowing that, um, we might show up someday and not see one of our regulars. It's, it's definitely, um, I think we all live in fear of that, of that day. And I know I, I was the one who was there, who found Nash, who was the one that we know we have lost. And, um, so I was the one who found him and that was definitely really difficult. Um, so while we know that they have the best possible situation, they still face danger from cars and from predators and things like that. So it's, um, it's tough. We have a lot of really, really wonderful things that have happened, but there are still some, um, it's, it's. Uh, TNR and community cats are you you have to take your it's a different kind of furry tale ending and we just have to look at you know even if their life isn't as long as we would like it to be at least the quality of life was as good as we could have made it so we do provide food every day we provide water we have toy we play with them with toys we have toys out for them and like they of course have a little tent and a tube and good shelter and so it's and they, they're so happy in their forest that you know at, at least they do have once we spay and neuter them their quality of life goes up dramatically and um that's the best we can do um That's why we advocate indoor cats around here. Yes, Nash is our big, he was, yep, he got hit by a car. He was a big, handsome, extremely handsome tabby cat with a curly tail. Very, very special. One of the first ones that I met there. Oh, don't attack me. <laughs> So, oh, is it fishy time? I think it's fishy time. No, it's not ham time. It's fishy time. There's your fish. Go get your fish. I love how her purring escalates as she as she gets frisky with my hand. No, no, we're not gonna play with my hand. Hands are not toys. Here, this is for you to bite. Yes, to bite that. Like that. Yes. Oh, who's squeaking? Hidden belly buttons. I'm being attacked by a ferocious tit monster. No, don't bite me. Don't bite me. Help. <laughs> oh. She's very cute. She gets a little wound up sometimes and is a little bit aggressive about seeking her affections. 
no, ow, no, ow, no, it hurts. No. So I don't encourage the, I don't encourage when she, uh, when she gets a little over enthusiastic. I try to replace with a toy and then if that doesn't work, act like she hurts me. And then she, she calms down a little bit. She gets distracted. There you go. That's a good girl. You're a good girl. There you go. Good girl. And we're good. <laughs> the moment has passed. It's, she's so funny though, because she just, she's purring the whole time and like making biscuits, but she just gets a little too excited. <laughs> But she's not, she doesn't actually hurt me. But when you guys hear me say, ow, that hurts. I'm just trying to not encourage the behavior because I'm sure that whoever adopts her would not be as charmed by getting a little nip every now and then. <laughs> oh, Cricket loves to attack your head. Well, I definitely trained her to do that. <laughs> Uh, Mila, I have not seen Mila, no. Um, I wasn't there yesterday, was Lori's day, and today is Kimsey's day, but I think I'm going this weekend. So we'll see. <laughs> uh, oh, she's so sweet. She's very sweet. Um, Cyrus has also been especially um, frisky lately. He's feeling much better and making up for uh, the time when he was sick. Let's do a little test if kittens are hearing anything. I think Tigress and Skipper responded a little bit. These two did not. The two in the back did not. Usually it happens slightly after they open their eyes. So it would be right around this time that the, they would start responding to noises. It's usually pretty obvious. You'll see when I come in, they'll all kind of sit up. Um, I think they've been responding to my smell because their sense of smell is pretty well developed at this point. Um, Eep and uh, Walt are so cute right now. I have to see if I can get a picture. Sorry, I have to do that. Look at your baby. Oh, no smacking on humans. No human smacking. Yes, the hand lotion test. Yep. I'm sure uh, many litters have reacted to when I put lotion on and come in and smell different. They will hiss. These guys have not been very hissy at all. You know, because they're pretty exceptional. Not ferocious like Mr. Badger was. Um, let's see. Oh, I keep calling Eep Tip because I'm old. Mm -hmm. 
so anywho, let's see. I've got so I, yeah, I we are trying to move like over the next few uh in the next few days so i will be trying to so i don't know lots of moving lots of moving stuff to do but uh the cats will be staying here so hopefully no disruption for them Snoring. jumped, I think, from the floor all the way to the window sound. That was impressive. Maybe not. Maybe she stopped. Made a stop on the way up, but it was pretty impressive regardless. Um, oh, did I bring my phone down? I also have to show you something adorable. Very adorable. What are you doing? Hi. <laughs> Hello. Oh, he 
He's so cute. Okay, I'm going to show you this adorable video. This happened. I have to find it now. <clears throat> this happened. Um, yesterday afternoon when I came in to the basement down here. This is what was right outside the window. Can you see it? I don't know if you can hear me. Can you hear Mama growling? You're very cute. Pretty cute. Three little babies and a mom. They were out there frolicking all day. It was very adorable. <laughs> so I had to, so I closed my windows because then I was terrified that she was just going to pop out the screen and come in and make herself at home. <laughs> So they're pretty cute. So now we have tons of raccoons. Because remember how there we had the one that was hit by a car and we had to send him away to critter care. And then the other one the other day that looked like he had been hit by a car that had a wound on his tail. But this one looks healthy. And all the babies look healthy. So that's good. <laughs> anyway. I thought that was very adorable, and I would have shown you live, but the the camera doesn't reach all the way over there. They probably come on this side sometimes too, though. Um, I know I thought it was a little strange that there um that the raccoons here are diurnal sometimes, but um, it's uh not a that unusual. I think the babies were just awake and playing and so the mom was like watching them. They're at that stage where they're probably hard to um, hard to keep together. Oh, so anyway, what? All right, well, uh, so everything is in order here. Um, Cisco was dewormed yesterday with Milbamax, which is good for tapeworms and all the other regular worms. Uh, so um, she did eat her dewormer pill and um, uh, Tip has had her revolution today. So all the mama cats are up to date on everything as much as I can do. I would love to give Cisco another revolution, but I can't. Um, and we'll see if I get a uh, a chance to weigh the babies uh, today. I will, or otherwise I can wait till tomorrow. They all look like they're doing well, nice and fat and healthy, and she's been spending lots of time with them, so. Very cute. You're very cute. Your toenails are long. Remember when I turned one of your toenails and you didn't really like it? We're gonna have to do that again. I think without this one. No, that's me. Oh. All right, everybody. I will tear myself away. Oh, uh, there was a request for um, belly close up. So here's one. We'll see how long I can get away with this before I get in trouble.
Betty, did you wake up? Oh, a little goat. Oh no, he woke up. Now I'm in trouble. Now I'm in trouble. Smoosh. Oh, smooshy. <laughs> they have the best little squeaks. It's so adorable. Here, we'll show you one more because he's Puss in Boots is still clinging to his umbilical stump. So there we go. There's his belly. Look at his little eyeball. Look at that. Oh, should we do a reset? Okay, we'll do a reset. Uh -huh, we'll do a little reset. Look at your eyeballs. If you have eyeballs, it's time to let go of your stump. Oh, oh, eat, there's no joke. Okay, all right. Stand by for reset. <laughs>